Hello everybody, welcome back to Expedition Homestead. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today is going to be another action-packed episode regarding cactus propagation. Before I get started, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and giving us a thumbs up to let the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoy videos like mine and would enjoy more videos on our channel in the future. Uh, so cactus propagation, we are a huge fan of it here on the channel. We've had all sorts of experiments throughout the years. And in today's video, we're going to be giving you all an update on some cactus that we propagated about a year ago. We took this off of our hedgehog cactus right here. Then we also have some uh, puntia cactus that we propagated and uh, choya cactus as well. So these are all, these are all in this uh, propagation tray. Basically, I just grew them in a seed uh, starting kit. That way, all of the water drains down to the bottom. I can really pin down the moisture content for these cactus uh, because there's not gonna be a ton of soil uh, that the water is going to be sitting in for long periods of time that would then damage these cactus cuttings that we've taken. So far, I do have to say that they're doing very well. I've had minimal issues with them whatsoever. They take very little care. Propagating cactus is one of the simplest things that we can do as far as all, all this cool little uh, experiments go in the indoor gardens. Uh, propagating cactus, propagating succulents, and then propagating stuff like uh, pulthos. E extremely easy and a lot of fun for everybody. All right, these have been growing for about a year. Most of them were, I would say about this size, if not a little bit smaller. And so we've seen some decent growth out of them. Obviously, it's going to be slow growth for the first year. And then it will continue to uh, speed up more and more after that. So at this point, I would say we have a well-developed cactus propagation that we could then transfer into a larger pot, uh, like one like this size, say like a three inch pot at this point. You could maybe organize a couple of different varieties together. So right there, that's our hedgehog cactus. And then uh, behind here, we have the Apuntia cactus. And this is a Guatemalense Monstros EP2, otherwise known as a Curly Sioux cactus. These curly Sioux cactuses are one of my favorites. Let's see if I can pull this out of here. This cutting is doing very well. Nice airy roots that are pretty full. They look very healthy as well. This right here is another curly Sioux that I propagated. This I have growing semi-hydroponically actually. So this basin down below is full of water all the water drains right into it and uh, i like to keep about an inch of water down beneath that and it's growing excellent if not i would say it's growing better than a lot of my other cuttings so pretty interesting there to see that type of growth from it when growing in water and another section that we've propagated uh, this is that beaver tail or apuntia cactus here we have the hedgehog cactus, uh, choya cactus, some chocolate soldier succulents, and then aloe behind us here. This one, as you can tell, I'm growing in a larger rubber made container. So uh, my overall soil depth is about five inches and I just water them as a whole. This is something I've liked doing ever since I established my first uh, larger mixed cactus planter. That is this one right here. So we have pencil cactus, Sansevieria. We had an old lady cactus that just passed away. Uh, Choya, then this is that beaver tail cactus. They are getting to be quite large and I do have to thin these out a little bit. So that's going to be a future video. But this was the first one of these types of cactus planters that I created. And I've loved growing in it because they just seem to work so well together. Everything seems to absorb all the water that it needs, even though generally they do have the same requirement. I've just found it really easy to take care of all of these uh, in one container. And quite honestly, it takes up less space too. So 
If you haven't made a larger planter like this, I would definitely consider doing so. So realistically, my next step is going to be transferring these cactus into their own little planters, whatever I might decide to create with them. That's what we're going to be doing next with them, not in today's video, though this is going to conclude today's video. Overall, just giving you a recap on those propagations. They're all doing so well. Very happy that we've had none of them die. So 100% propagation rate on those. Uh, definitely go and try it at home if you've never done it. It is a blast. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode of Expedition Homestead, and we'll see you in the next one.